as I already kind of discussed in, in other uh, course content, for each of your writing assignments, you're going to receive feedback in several formats. Uh, inline commentary, uh, overall narrative, and then also the rubrics. And the rubrics here are going to be a, a really key feature for our conversations because on one hand they're a simple shorthand, that is they point you to a, a document and says, here's where your writing is right now at a certain level uh, and what kind of traits are commensurate with that level. On the other hand, it also lets us kind of practice a language together. Uh, I know something about writing that I'd like you to know and, and practice and become expert in, and this document kind of lets me put it out there for you to practice, to try on that outfit as it were, to see how this thing can work for you so you can practice that later without my direction or any instruction. So for this, uh, for this real quick content, I'm going to do an overview of the idea of the rubrics and what they can be used for. And, and really, for your purposes, there are a lot of moments for these rubrics, but the ones that I want to focus on are, are really twofold. One would be, before you submit an assignment, you can use the rubrics to kind of help yourself, direct yourself to where you want to go. Rubrics, while they contain assessment information, they also tell you kind of how things are being assessed. So it's kind of like building an answer into a question. On the tail end, once you get rubric feedback, you can see how your writing performed. So in this way, then, you can use the rubrics before you've even submitted work to kind of self-assess before you submit work. What does a rubric do? Well, they do a lot of things. I pointed out two that I want you to kind of see here in this brief video. Uh, but ideally, they help you to understand why your document was scored the way it was, so to help you to underst uh, understand instructor scoring, to predict writing expectations across assignments. So basically, like I've said there already, to kind of help you to communicate with the instructor, establish a common language, and determine what kinds of things you can focus on, specific iterable aspects of your writing to improve across uh, drafts of a certain writing assignment. For our purposes then, for our UNF rubrics, we have uh, seven levels from zero to six for these assignments. For example, in the coherence rubric, you can see here in the right-hand column, uh, from unacceptable or incomplete assignment to artist. Um, this is just a metaphor, and you could choose any metaphor you want. You could think NFL, college, high school, um, junior, peewee, etc. different kinds of levels, skills that take you to the next level. Not every football player, for example, is going to make it from the college uh, to the professional league, but you can practice certain things to, to bring yourself to that next level. So for our purposes, we really zero in on specific aspects of writing. Uh, thesis, coherence, evidence, mechanics, plainness of style of prose, a summary mastery as a genre. And in each one of these ideas, there are certain levels for how you can look at uh, your writing. And you can think about how different choices you've made or maybe things you haven't yet thought about in your writing or maybe that are implicit to your process or your thinking but not really manifest or present in your choices, your act of choosing are present in, in these rubrics. So for example, in the plain English style rubric, you can see it at, at a two level here, this score of average, and you take two to be a C if that helps you to understand rubrics. Uh, writing exhibits minor problems in sentences, dictions, or tone. And then we see a level above at level three. What does that mean? It, it's, it's better than the two. Well, numerically we know that. But look to the left of that number three, and we see that sentences are clear, show variety and complexity. Diction is, in a, is appropriate to rhetorical situation, et cetera, and you can compare. But essentially, if you were to get feedback and see that your plainness of style for your summary were a two score, and you said, well, I, well I'm aiming for an A, I'm trying to write better, what can, things can I do? Well, here's a list of things you can consider. Maybe you haven't considered them in a, in a way that's manifest in your writing yet. And that's the purpose of these rubrics, to so go through each one of these documents to figure out how can you zoom in, zone in, and figure out something that you can really focus in on. Those are the rubrics. They're, uh, they're labels for containers that help you and to me to kind of talk about the same thing in a way that helps you to revise your documents. So for each one of your assignments, you'll get rubric feedback. And you want to make sure that you're concentrating on those, those rubrics and using them. And you can see them inside of uh, each assignment when you turn in work. So each time that you look at work, you'll be, you'll be given the rubrics for an assignment. And you can actually use those rubrics to kind of guide you. For example, in the summary assignment, when you go to attach that, you'll see there's actually a rubric link here, uh, view rubric. And when you do, you'll see there's actually content here that'll help guide you to consider, well, what things should I be considering when I'm writing this summary? Well, 
judging by this table, it seems like mechanics, evidence, style, summary, mastery. That means I should be looking at something over here in the A level, or if we want to think about that, the four level, that skilled craftsperson. And so in this way, we see how Rupert kind of translates, you know, maybe from F as zero to one as, as a D, two is average, three is above average, and four is A level. So for you as an undergraduate student doing this kind of writing, this is the mark you're trying to hit, this 95% if you want to think about it mathematically, this, this four level. As, uh, try for five and six, of course, but that's many drafts, many revisions. And so when you're already doing that, and when you're already taking the time to write many drafts over, this is where the writing tends to be, towards the higher end of that spectrum. And we can shift that, you know, use it as a graduate program. Maybe five is an A now, and four is a B, etc. And this is just a, a tool, again, for us to talk about your writing.